right, we'll go ahead and get started. Psalm 172. Psalm 172, Jesus loves even me. Find your place there. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. All three verses. Psalm 172 will stand and we'll sing Jesus loves even me. Psalm 172, all three verses. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Though I forget him and wander away, still he doth love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms would I flee when I remember that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Oh, there is only one song I can sing. When in his beauty I see the great King, this shall my song in eternity be. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. All right, we'll remain standing for opening prayer this afternoon. And let's go ahead and pray. Dear Father, Lord, once again, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house this evening, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you be in the, all that we do. I ask that you be in the music that's sung, Lord. We ask that you be in the preaching to come here in just a little bit, Lord, that you would um, bless the preacher, Lord, and that you would speak through him, Lord, and that you would uh, <clears throat> prepare our hearts for the message, Lord. We ask, Lord, again, that you be with all the prayer requests that we mentioned this morning, Lord. Thank you for Brother Westmoreland and the opportunity. He took to be with us this morning. Lord, bless him for that, Lord. We appreciate him and his faithfulness, Lord. We ask, Lord, now to be in all that we say and do, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. And if you'll take your hymnals, let's sing song number, um, let's see. I had a song picked out. Let's do song number. Let me change gears. Let's do song number. Uh, let's do song number nine. Song number nine this afternoon. Song number nine, the unclouded day. <clears throat> let's do verses, uh, all right, let's just do all four verses. Song number nine, verses one, two, three, and four. The unclouded day, verses one, two, three, and four. Song number nine. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a home where my friends have gone. Oh, they tell me of that land far away, where the tree of life in eternal bloom sheds its fragrance through the unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. 
Oh, they tell me of the king in his beauty there. And they tell me that mine eyes shall behold where he sits on the throne that is whiter than snow. In the city that is made of gold. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me that he smiles on his children there. And his smile drives their sorrows all away. And they tell me that no tears ever come again. In that lovely land of unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Wonderful singing. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. <clears throat> All right. As far as the announcements go, I uh, enjoyed having Brother Westmoreland with us this, mo uh, this morning. Uh, he did Sunday school for us and then the uh, morning service from, preached a tremendous message on the gospel, the everlasting gospel. And that was a, a great message. I uh, appreciate uh, him and his faithfulness through all the years. Uh, as far as the, the announcements, though, we've got our Easter sunrise service coming up on, of course, Easter Day. That is on the 31st of this month. <sighs> I'm full. It's hard to breathe. And sing and talk when you're full. Um, we had a good time of fellowship. We we went out to Bubby's. He when we came last year, uh, he stayed in the hotel right across from from Bubby's basically. So that's where he went. He really enjoyed it and wanted to go back. So uh, we we took him there. But um, not too bad. We it was right at fifty dollars for three of us. So, um, but for what you get the. I don't think so. That didn't seem like a lot for to me, anyways. It was not bad at all. It was really good. Like that. As soon as I walked up to the buffet, they had put out uh, fresh fried green tomatoes. Um, Brother Westmoreland, as we were getting ready to leave, he said, "If I wasn't so full, they just brought out a bunch of or a bread and a fresh batch of ribs." And he said that meat was just falling off the bone. He said, "But I am too full." So it's. Mm -hmm. They they post the pictures every day and it's it's good it's it's worth the money it's it's every bit home cooking so and speaking of home cooking our Easter service we will be having our uh, breakfast right after the morning sunrise service at seven a.m. Brother Keen has agreed to bring his griddle again so we're just going to cook it all right then and there on that big old griddle and have it all ready and uh, I I enjoyed that I, I loved it last year looking forward to doing it again this year. Then our morning service that morning as well at 11 a.m. Uh, the Cancer Patient Fund has their annual chicken and dumpling dinner fundraiser coming up on the 6th. And that is always, again, good home cooking that you, you can't beat. Chicken and dumplings, green beans, corn, coleslaw, a roll or cornbread, dessert, and a drink for $10. So, it's free. So, but it's always wonderful, and it's, it's for such a good cause. <clears throat> I encourage you on the 4th uh, to go out and, and get one. Uh, I know we will get one. We usually try to get one for Miss Sarah and for Casey as well and, and take it to them. So, uh, I encourage you to do that on the 6th. The next ladies' get-together will be on the 13th. Um, all the details are to be determined uh, right now, but she will get that uh, sorted and together and everything before the next ladies' get-together. And the Camp Victory's Ladies Retreat is on the 26th and 27th, and we've got a, a good group already signed up for that. So we're looking forward to, to hearing what God does through all of that. All right, I believe that's all of the announcements. So at this time, we'll go ahead and take up our offering. Brother Levi? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you again 
thank you for the service this morning. Thank you for the wonderful message out of your word. Thank you for using Brother Westmore. And Lord, we do pray that you just continue to be with him and guide him, uh, keep him safe on the roads, Lord. And we pray you'd use him at this meeting this week. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with us tonight, Lord, be with Brother Lee as he's going to be preaching for us uh, tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless him, that you would use him to, to speak to our hearts. Lord, thank you again for these that are here. We pray you'll bless them, speak to our hearts, Lord, and that you will bless the offering. Now, bless the gift and the giver alike. We love you in Christ's name. Amen. And that was the other announcement. Brother Lee's going to be preaching. So I wasn't sure if I was going to make it back in time. Um, we made it back, but he didn't get to preach earlier this week or this month because he was sick. And uh, so he, he said he he was feeling up to it, other than his voice. If his vo voice holds out. He said the only three things that make him sound this way is the flu, COVID, and Bradford pears. So I tried to count them the other day. Thank you. From literally just a, like one to two miles from my house is 20-something, on, just on the side of the road. They're, they're everywhere. I never paid attention. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're all over the place. <clears throat> and you can feel it. The frogs have come out. Yeah. But that's all out. I believe. Why don't you come? Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you again, Lord, one more time. This is Song 74. Song 74, Kneel at the Cross. Uh, we'll sing all three verses. Song 74, you can stay seated this afternoon. Rest a little bit. Song 74, Kneel at the Cross, verses 1, 2, and 3. <clears throat> Kneel at the cross, Christ will meet you there, come while he waits for you. List to his voice, leave with him your care, and begin life anew. Kneel at the cross, leave every care. Kneel at the cross, Jesus will meet you there. Kneel at the cross, there is room for all who would his glory share. Bliss there awaits, harm can there befall those who are anchored there. Kneel at the cross, leave every care. Kneel at the cross, Jesus will meet you there. Kneel at the cross, give your idols up, look unto realms above. Turn not away to life's sparkling cup. Trust only in his love. Kneel at the cross. Leave every care. Kneel at the cross. Jesus will meet you there. All right, thank you. At this time, my wife's going to sing for us. And uh, pray for her. She's not been feeling well the past couple of days. <clears throat> Mainly because she has to put up with me. And the kids. And the cat. I know you're going through the fire. It's getting hard to stand the heat. But even harder is the wondering. Is God's hand still on me? It's lonely in the flames when you're counting days of pain. 
but the potter knows the clay, how much pressure it can take, how many times around the week, till there's submission to his will. He's planned a beautiful design. But it'll take some fire and time. It's gonna be okay. Cause the potter knows the clay. Friend, I just came through that fire. Not too very long ago. And looking back, I can see why, and that my God was in control. But on the hottest days, I'd cry, oh Lord, isn't it about time? But the potter knows the clay. How much pressure it can take, how many times around the week, till there's submission to his will. He's planned a beautiful design, but it'll take some fire and time. It's gonna be okay Cause the potter knows the clay He's planned a beautiful design But it'll take some fire and time It's gonna be okay Cause the potter he knows the clay. Sang that song mainly because I didn't have to sing any. All right, if you take your Bibles tonight. This afternoon, <clears throat> so in John chapter number ten is where we're going to start. John chapter number ten, and uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to preach this message. Hopefully, I make it through it <clears throat> and do the word of God justice. We've got just a little bit of water left. It'll be fine. If the voice gives out. We'll be done. I'll get out here early. But John ten verse thirty nine. And uh, I'm glad, uh, again, the opportunity to preach this message, not because I want to preach, but because I believe this will be an encouragement uh, mainly to our pastor. And that's what I want to preach this afternoon is just a, a message on uh, encouraging our pastor because, and I've, and I've preached uh, a couple um, messages like this over the years. I've been preaching now for a little over 20 years. Still ain't good at it. You think you know, get something for twenty years, you might be okay at it. Not yet. So my wife's doing sign language in the back. You don't want to know exactly what she's asking. Um, but uh, but anyways, um, so but John chapter number ten. I want to start in verse number thirty nine. Just read it down to the end of the chapter here. And uh, um, and after this message, might be the last time Brother Eddie asked me to preach. Um, um, and I'm. Hopefully joking, of course, but uh, it's going to be a little different. But John chapter 10, verse number 39 says, Therefore they sought him again to take him. Uh, speaking of Jesus, they're trying to stone him back up in verse number 33, um, I think. Yeah, verse 32, 33. So they're looking to stone him, but anyway, in verse 39, Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away beyond, again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. And many believed on him 
there. So let's jump in, uh, pray once again, we'll jump right into the message. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, thank you for the opportunity to need to be in your house today. Lord, we ask that you uh, bless the message, Lord. I ask that you uh, allow me to preach it um, the way you want me to, Lord, and uh, convey the thought, Lord, that uh, you want me to convey, Lord, and and, and uh, do exactly what you want me to do tonight, Lord, not what I want, but to ask, Lord, that you be with the message. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So here you find in John, you find, uh, again, jo- Jesus is is escaping. And you find that verse number 39, but he escaped out of their hands. So the Jews are trying to stone him. Uh, but I don't want to not necessarily preach on uh, Jesus. Um, it's, it's, of course, never wrong to preach on Jesus, but I want to go down a uh, few verses down and says, um, talking about John, verse number 40. In the, and uh, so verse 40, it says, and went away again beyond Jordan to the place where John at first baptized. And uh, there he abode and many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle. And I want to preach on uh, just this thought tonight. What kind of ministry does God want our pastor to have? What kind of ministry does our God want our pastor to have? And and I got this thought, and I was because um, one night it's been three or four weeks ago, sometime in the middle of last month, and uh, I was uh, uh I think Ashley was either in bed or she was taking one of her long baths to decompress after dealing with the kids and me and the cat all day. Y'all pray for her; she's got a lot to deal with. And uh, but the kids were already asleep, and and I, so I was just sitting in the living room by myself doing a little bit of uh, uh, whatever I do reading or, or playing video games or watching TV, but I'm slipping through the TV and came along across a uh, uh, one of those uh, religious channels where there was a, a fella up there, um, and I'll use this term loosely preaching, and uh, very loosely preaching, and, and, I, and I started listening, and I was like, man, this guy doesn't make any sense. Let me, so I pulled up a biography of this guy. I'm not even going to mention his name, um, but I want to read a little bit of his biography. And uh, so it's he's one of these people who has his name and then ministry after it. And so John Doe Ministries, you know these people uh, on TV. Uh, but he's one of those. Um, and uh, he's been doing this for a while. And he's associated with the charismatic movement. And so I'm not going to necessarily preach against the charismatic movement, though. That would take too much time. But uh, um, but anyway, uh, he is uh, – so this fella – um, has been uh, so this guy's up here. He's preaching. He's been married three times, divorced twice. Number one does not qualify him to be a preacher or a pastor, but he has this ministry and he preaches this prosperity theology um, that states that uh, a divine favor is expressed in material and financial blessing, and he performs miracles and and all this. And then a lot of times you'll get to it's into this, and people ask you what kind of miracles has your church done lately, Lord. What kind of miracles has your pastor done lately? But uh, anyways, continuing on. Um, but uh, and uh, but anyways, his his ministry has been controversial and it's been uh, criticism. And he and uh, going through this, and I'm just going to skip a lot of it. Um, anyways, he is listed as America's wealthiest pastor at seven hundred and fifty million dollars. That is a lot of money. But anyways, I'm not going to say exactly who this guy is. But continuing on. But anyways, a lot of people put stock in the ministries, and now you have all these people who have these names attached, their names attached to the ministry. And, and tonight, I just want to boil it down to what kind of ministry does God want us to be for our pastor, or what kind of ministry does God want our pastor to have? So here, looking at John the Baptist, so here we find that John did no miracles. The Bible explicitly says that, verse 41 John did no miracle. Now, I want to start off this sermon by stating that John could have done miracles had it been God's will. Luke chapter number 1, verse number 17. You don't have to turn to all the passages I'm going to tonight. Just write them down. Look at them yourself. But John 1, 17. And uh, here you find uh, this is uh, whenever, right at the, uh, uh, right before the birth of John the Baptist. But John number uh, John or Luke one seventeen says, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So this was going to be John's ministry. He was going to go before Christ, and he was going to go in the power of Elias. Now Elias in the New Testament is speaking of Elijah. Now if you remember Elijah, back in the Old Testament, did miracles. He did several miracles in the Old Testament. 
Um, but uh, so this is Elijah. And so we know that Elijah did, uh, did miracles. But here it says here that uh, he shall go in before him in the spirit and power of Elias. So in the spirit and power of Elijah. So he had the same power upon him that Elijah had upon him back in the Old Testament. Elijah did miracles. John did not, but could have because he had the same power. So uh, continuing on. Um, but uh, so here we find that so that uh, John could have, but he did not. Um, it's not so uh, what not God's will that he did miracles. And uh, we talk about people who uh, uh, and you see this a lot on uh, these televangelists on these on these television shows and, and everything. Um, but here but let me talk about I've got four points. I think I wrote down one, two, four points on John that John did that made him better. Even though he did no miracles, but he was the 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 preacher that God wanted him to be. First off, he was a man sent from God. Uh, in fact, uh, the Bible only records this once, as he was sent by God, and it was talking about John the Baptist. John chapter number one, verse number six. Let me read this. And it says, and "There was a man sent from God whose name was John." And uh, let me go down to verse number eight. Verse seven says, "And he came for a." The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. So here you have um, the Bible speaking here about John the Baptist saying that he was sent to bear witness. So he was a man sent from God. And so John was more interested in his witness than he was uh, in anything else. He was That was his main focus was to point people to Christ. He was to be the witness of that. Uh, and the Bible says that right here. And the same, verse number 7, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. And, of course, the light there is capitalized. Speaking of a, it's a proper noun, Levi. Levi's been learning common and proper nouns in his third grade English class. It's a proper noun. Now, it is capitalized. It is speaking about a specific person, place, or thing. In this case, a specific person speaking of Jesus. So we know here that he was to be the witness. The point uh, people to the light that men through him might believe. So this was his purpose in his entire ministry was to point people to Jesus. Uh, he was more interested in that. Uh, John 3, verse number 30. Uh, the Bible says here, um, John the Baptist here. Let me go ahead and go back down to uh, 26. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I am, uh, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase. And I must decrease. So here you have John speaking to these people who came to him to accuse Jesus of being more popular than he is. And John said, look, that's that's not my." He said, you, you've heard me say this time and time again. I am not the Christ. He is. I must decrease. He must increase. So instead of, so you didn't have John the Baptist running around with John the Baptist ministries doing John the Baptist miracles. And his John the Baptist airplane flying all over the world, making tons of money. No, you had John who said, look, no, it's not about me. It's about Christ. He must increase. I must decrease. I don't care if anybody else knows my name. Unfortunately, that's not the way in most pastors. They want everybody to know who they are. They want to know everybody. They want everybody to know who their church is. And and uh, But here you find John was not that. And this was a man sent from God. So, as far as the charismatic crew, uh, um, crew is concerned, the charismatic movement, John the Baptist would not have been a, a good pastor because there was no miracles done in John the Baptist's ministry. But God put his stamp of approval on John the Baptist. It's not about him. It's not about that. Um, so, he was more interested in his witness, and he was also more interested in his calling than his lifestyle. Um, let me, let's go back to Matthew chapter number 3. Matthew chapter number 3, verse number uh, 1, the Bible says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, 
Now, this is where he lived. This is where he roamed. He roamed in the wilderness of Judea. And he says, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that spake or was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Uh, the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and leather, leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. They went out to him uh, Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Let me stop there for a minute. So here you have John. He was more interested in his calling than his lifestyle. And I made actually listen to a song, uh, one that uh, uh, I probably should not mention this. Has anybody heard Ray Stevens' song, Would Jesus Wear a Rolex on his television show? He would not. Jesus would not wear a Rolex. But the song starts off with uh, um, Ray Stevens singing. He says, Sunday morning, I turn on the TV, and there's a man asking for my money. I'm about to write him a check for $20, and he's got $10,000 on his arm. Now I wear a $99 smartwatch, but uh, it's not a Rolex. But here you find, and this man, seven a pastor worth $750 million. That's crazy. And it's all about him. His name is blasted all over his ministry. and his, <laughs> But anyways, but here you find that John was more interested in his calling. His calling was to go out and point others to Christ. Then he was his lifestyle. You find John here, verse number four, Matthew three, verse number four. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins. He didn't own much. He owned a camel hair shirt and a, and a leather girdle. That's all the clothes he had. And look at some of the preachers today. And this man was out. He was preaching. He was doing what he was supposed to do preaching um, others. But you find out what happened. He's out here he's preaching. He says, repent. It means turn from your sins. He says, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's out there preaching against sin. He's out there preaching. And we'll get into this here in just a little bit uh, in a couple more points about what his message was. But he's preaching these people and he says, repent. The kingdom of heaven's at hand. He said, um, your lifestyle is wrong. Your, what you're doing is wrong. You have to repent. Christ is coming. And what happened? Verse number five. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all of Judea and the region round about Jordan. This is a big area, and tons of people are flocking to him, getting saved. Man, he's only preaching. God told him to preach. Repent, for this kingdom of heaven is at hand. And uh, so John was, uh, so number one, he was a man sent from God. That's a lot to point number one. But number two, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter number 1, verse 15. Let me read it. Uh, you don't have to turn there. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Chapter number 1. This made a lot of sense when I was writing it out. Luke chapter number 1, verse number 15. The Bible says here, For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he, sh <clears throat> and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. So this is uh, this. So this is um, when the angel comes and tells Elizabeth and Zechariah about their son. They're going to call him John the Baptist, and this is what uh, the angel said. He said he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, not in the sight of men. He's not going to be the wealthiest man. He's not going to he's not going to have millions of followers or millions of dollars. He's going to be great in the sight of the Lord. But he shall neither drink wine uh, nor strong drink. And but he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Now, up to this point in the Bible, this never happened. The Holy Ghost would come upon people at certain times. They would perform their uh, whatever God wanted them to do then, and then it would go on to somebody else. But here you have John the Baptist. From the time he is born to the death, would have the Holy Ghost upon him the entire entirety of his life. This is the first time this has ever happened in the Bible. Now, we this was before John chapter number 16 when Jesus says, I must go, but I will send a comforter. We know about the Holy Ghost, and we know what happens. And we'll get in that here in just a minute. But the purpose, and so here you find that he was filled. Number one, he was a man sent from God. Number two, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, um, <laughs> didn't really want to get into this a whole lot, but uh, being filled with the Holy Ghost doesn't mean you're standing up here speaking in tongues. doesn't mean you're going to have somebody come up here. You're going to lay hands upon them. They're going to flop all over the floor and be healed from their wheelchair. That's not the purpose of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, but uh, 
the uh, and the, so the purpose of being filled with the Holy Ghost number one is not working miracles it's to be a witness for the Lord and uh, this is uh, conveyed in, to the church in in the book of Acts chapter number one verse number eight we know the verse um, I'm gonna read it but uh, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So this is where the uh, where Jesus is about to send into heaven. The apostles and the, and the church are, are assembled there to him. And uh, he says, look, he said, well, verse 7, he said, And then it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He said, after the Holy Ghost is coming upon you, you will receive power. You will receive power from God. And uh, we know that this happens upon salvation. When you get saved, the Holy Ghost comes and dwells within you. And the uh, the amount of power that you have is just dependent upon how much you yield to the Holy Spirit. But here we find that um, it's ten days later at, the, at Pentecost when when uh, the when the they are baptized with uh, with the tongues of fire and um, the um, um, Holy Ghost comes upon Peter and he's preaching at the. But it wasn't for Peter's sake. How many what they were added unto church three thousand was to be a witness. And that's what is and that's what Jesus says here. He says, After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be witnesses unto me. And that's the only purpose for having the power of the Holy Ghost is to be a witness. And uh so but here we find that John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost. And the purpose of being filled with the Holy Ghost is here in Acts chapter one number eight. Uh Acts one verse eight is to is to be a witness uh, for the Lord to the lost. And then also, it is the power of the Holy Ghost is necessary, and it is key to fulfilling the purpose of just being a Christian, uh, being what God wants you to be. Um, this is found in Ephesians chapter number 5. I won't have to turn there, but I will. Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number uh, 18. Let me read this. Um, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And the Bible goes on to say down to verse number 25. Let me read this. Uh, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the, the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So here you find um, the, the Apostle Paul writing to the church of Ephesus, and he says, look, he says, look, you're supposed to, you know, submit yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord, and then wives submitting to the husbands, and husbands, of course, uh, submitting, uh, loving to your wife, and as Christ loved the church, and this is part of basic Christianity, is, you know, being what God wants you to be here. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of this, but it all boils down to you can't do any of 19 through 25 or even through the rest of the chapter. You can't write, you can't do any of that without verse number 18. Verse number 18 again says, and be not drunk, when, drunk with wine where is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So even as church members, the Holy Spirit's purpose is to help us to be good Christians, to be what God wants us to be. And we can't do any of all of this, uh, verse number 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, uh, even 25. These are direct commandments that God had the Apostle Paul pinned down on paper to give to the church. And you can't do those without the Holy Spirit. And so that's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. We know that John was full of the Holy Spirit. So... We know that John was a preacher, and, and I wanted to, do, to preach this to, to be an encouragement to Brother Eddie, but also on, on, the, uh, on the, other, but the other side of the coin is as a church, as the ministry of Southeastern Baptist Church, we're going to need the Holy Spirit to be the church members that we're supposed to be as well. And number three, um, so, so anyways, you can't, do, you can't do anything as a Christian without the Holy Spirit, and that's the purpose of the Holy Ghost is to, number one, be a witness to the lost. And number two, just to fulfill the purpose as a Christian. And then number three, this uh, afternoon, um, by John the Baptist, he preached the message of God. 
Uh, Matthew chapter number three, verse number two. Let me go back here. Uh, for some reason, I am in the book of Ezekiel. Let's go back to Matthew. Matthew chapter number three, verse number two. And we talked a little bit about this in, over in one of our other points. But verse number two, um, he says, uh, we'll preach this. Uh, he said, for this is, well, let's see here. Uh, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So you here you find that the, he preached the message of God. And I would not um, give a preacher two cents if he doesn't preach the, the word of God. And uh, here you find that he's preaching repentance. He's preaching the message of God. Um, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You find that he preached against sin. And this ultimately is what led him into uh, prison. Matthew 14, verse number 3, um, the Bible says here, let's see here, now we go to verse 1. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch, uh, Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. But John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. So here you find that John is preaching against the sin of Herod, and uh, so you, and then of course Herod had John the Baptist put to death. But here you find that he's preaching against sin, and uh, so John the Baptist is preaching to repent. He's preaching against sin. Um, the Bible doesn't record a whole lot about what John the Baptist preaches, but we do know that he was preaching towards uh, to uh, to be uh, to bear witness to towards the light. So then, of course, John's own word says, "You know, you've heard me say that I am not the Christ, and that uh, he must increase and I must decrease." But uh, he preached. Uh, lots of things the bible doesn't record a whole lot uh, in fact luke chapter 3 verse number 18 the bible says here hmm, let's see here let me go back down to uh, uh let's go to verse 15 luke three fifteen. it says and, and as the people were in expectation and all men mused in their hearts of john whether he were the christ or not john answered saying unto them uh, unto them all i indeed baptize you with water but one mightier than i cometh the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will uh, thoroughly purge, or thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, and the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. Verse number 18, and many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people. So he preached many other things. The Bible, record, of course, uh, records that he preached, repent for the king of heaven is at hand. And he preached that, uh, you know, he said, I must in, uh, decrease and he must increase. Um, and uh, he says, I'm not Christ. There's one coming. And, he, and then the Bible says here, verse 18, and many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people. So he preached a lot. He preached on lots of different subjects. And just like our pastor does. Uh, he probably preached on the judgment of God. He probably preached on being holy. He probably preached on uh, growing in grace, being faithful to Christ. He probably preached all of these, and that is good, because he preached what God wanted him to preach, many other things. And then lastly, this afternoon, as a preacher, he did no miracles, yet he was listed as the greatest. Um and uh, but here you find that he pointed men to Christ again. Back to Luke chapter number one. Let me show you Luke chapter number one. Verse sixteen. The Bible says here sixteen. For he shall be greater in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Again, this verse is about John. Verse 17, he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So lastly, you know what? We just pointed people to Christ. And uh, so, you know, John was not Cited, was not recorded, was not known for the miracles he did. He didn't. He was never, he never formed a miracle. In fact, the Bible explicitly says that. And, uh, but uh, it was acknowledged for leading men to Christ. And that's pretty much what he says. Verse 17, he shall make, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And if Brother Eddie, as the pastor of Southeastern Baptist Church, doesn't do anything else but get us ready for the coming of the Lord, 
He is fulfilled. His duty is pastor. As a minister, not to be famous, not to be wealthy, not to be well-known abroad, not to be a great evangelist or be a great... Um, and if God makes us famous and gives us a big giant church, that's all well and good, but that's up to God. It's not us. It's not that prosperity preaching of te televangelists that's, you know, only divine favor is given by wealth. No, it's not. It's, we know what greed is. Greed is one of the it's a, a major sin and pride. And, but uh, we can see that the most important thing to the Lord is not working miracles. It's not growing a large church, not a, amassing a massive sum of money. That's not what's important to God. But it is pointing men to Christ. And uh, again, as John as as the angel told John the Baptist's mother and father, look, he shall go before them in the spirit of Elias. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, make the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And that's the purpose. That's the kind of preacher God wants us to have. And I believe that's the kind of preacher we've got. I believe Brother Eddie follows God and does what God wants him to do, preaches what God wants him to preach. But on the flip side, it's us, as part of the, uh, as part of the church, as members of the church, we need to be a people that are ready, that are prepared for the Lord, and we need to help Brother Eddie fulfill his calling, and we need to help point others to Christ in this world. So, with every head bowed, every eye closed tonight, this afternoon, message was a little all over the place. This is what God laid on my heart. Maybe a sense of encouragement. Maybe even for us, where we, you know, we're not, we're not the most famous church, not the biggest church in the state. We're not. Maybe people don't know us, and that's all right. As long as we're doing what God wants us to do, it'll be exactly what God wants us to do. We just have a short moment of invitation. The altar is open. If you need to do business with God, maybe you're here tonight. Maybe you're not saved. That's the first thing. Let's point you to Christ and pray for you. If you Definitely lift you up to prayer, but uh, we would love to show the show you how you can be saved. And as Brother Westmoreland preached this morning, it's simple. It's just a childlike faith in Christ. Uh, but if that's you, we'd love to pray for you. But the altar's open if you need to do business with God. Attention tonight. I feel good. My voice doesn't make me sound like I do. But, uh, um, again, thank God for the opportunity to preach. Anybody have anything they'd like to say or testimony before we dismiss tonight?